We're alive. Good morning. It's Tuesday. It's rainy out. Um, got a great topic for today. Great topic. Let me just put the topic out there. I'm going to repeat myself, of course, because this is alive while everybody joins. Good morning, everybody. Got my notes in front of me. Today, we're going to be talking about rehab, rehabbing the mind, separation anxiety. That's pretty much, you know, we're going to be tackling anxiety in general, okay? Rehab for the mind. So if you hang in there, I've, I'm going to explain the process to you as simple as I can to give you an idea. And this, this helps with all sorts of anxiety, okay? Um, actually, yeah, it doesn't have to be as bad of a case where they need rehab. You can do this with any dog. And we do do it with every dog. But this is the process. This is how we're going to rehab a dog's mind who has a lot of anxiety, especially dogs who have anxiety about the world. This is the big one, the, the anticipatory anxiety we talk about. We'll actually um, make a divide between um, separation anxiety and anticipatory anxiety for now, and we'll set separation anxiety aside. I'll tackle that at another time. But let's talk about the anticipatory anxiety. If you don't know what that is, and if you're new around here, you know we talk about this one a lot. Um, that is the anxiety a dog gets when it's thinking about something that's going to happen in the future. So it's like if you bring out the leash, and they, that means to them, walk. Now they're thinking about the walk, okay? And now they're getting possibly anxious about the walk. This is anticipatory anxiety. Or a dog, um, you know, uh, is getting anxious for food or something, like it's around that time, so I'm starting to, you know, uh, what happens is dogs tend to get stuck in that space because everything is a trigger for them. The door means a walk, so now I'm worried about the walk, and, and, and my, my human means these options, and now I'm worried about this. They worry about all options all the time, and they can't turn their brain off. This is the rehab of the mind that we're going to be talking about today, and we're gonna use state of mind training. This is exciting, and I'm gonna to try to make it very easy to understand, okay? I do have a couple notes in front of me because, believe it or not, like I said, if you see this stuff done in person, um, it's, it's easier to explain showing than telling, but I'm going to try to tell, okay? So, here we go. Rehabbing the mind. A dog comes in, and it's uh, very anxious. Why is it anxious? Isn't that the good question? And it's not because it was beat. <laughs> you, you know, usually this dog um, is either afraid of the world, it doesn't understand the world, or... There's two types, right? It's the, the, there's the, there can be the kinds that really are nervous of the world who are anxious of everything, and then there can be the kinds that are really excited about the world who are anxious about everything. Like, I know the world and I love the world. I love everything. I, I love going on walks, I love doing this. So they're, they're, they're anxious too, but they're anxious in a way where they're worrying because they wanna do it, like I can't wait to do it. Where the other guy who's fearful is, is anxious because I'm nervous in this environment. I don't feel comfortable, you know? We deal with them the same way, essentially, okay? Now this is what I need you to imagine. This is an abstract concept, concept okay? Um, not really that abstract, actually. Um, but this is how I want you to learn, okay? Because once you know this, you can rehab a dog's mind, all right? So we're gonna take that dog, the anxious dog, the dog who um, you know reacts to the world in a, in a negative way with anxiety. We're gonna put them in an empty room. You can think of it as a box, it's just you in the dog. That's it. You can even put the dog <laughs> in the center of the room if you want in your imagination. And what we're going to do is we're going to teach this dog the first step. We're going to teach it the calm state of mind. Okay? You cannot rehab a dog if they don't know how to enter a healthy state of mind. Okay? So I can't just start working with this dog. I need to teach it a healthy state of mind, which is what we're going to call the calm state of mind because that's, that term's been around for a long time. And what that is, this is a space where a dog is no longer worrying about the future. Okay, yes, dogs live in the moment, right? Or do they? Or do they? And that's another thing we're going to talk about today. You know, you got to question these things because if I got this dog in this empty space, this empty room, and it's just me and the dog, and I bring this leash out, and the dog triggers to the leash because it means the walk, so the, you see the anxiety go. Actually... I don't want to go get too ahead of myself. I don't want to do that. I got to teach everybody proper before I go to that process. So we got to teach the dog the calm state of mind, okay? There are methods to do this. I can't explain exactly how to do that right now because that would be a whole nother thing. But no, I'm going to teach it the calm state of mind. 
which is going to uh, usually is going to be done in some type of submission. If you watch the old dog whispering stuff, that's it. When you see him finish his process with the dog and he says, now the dog's in a calm state of mind, that's what we're doing, okay? Once the dog's in that calm state of mind and I've started to bond with it, now it's in this, it's in this empty room. There's nothing in it to trigger to. It's just me and the dog and they're in this calm state of mind. This is where the work begins. I need to put that calm state of mind on cue. I need to teach the dog that, like if you're Cesar Milan, right? The master of this stuff. If he goes, Shh, that means go to the calm state of mind. So he's putting it on cue. You don't have to use that, that sound. You can use any sound you want, but you have to understand the process of putting the calm state of man, command on cue, okay? And maybe I'll cover that in a video actually, because that's one, one that I'd have to show you, um, but that's a good thing to cover. So you, so you teach the dog the calm state of mind by you know submitting the dog, if you will. I mean, that's old terminology, but the dog submits to the situation and they just relax. They stop worrying about the future, okay? Once you get that, I'm trying to put it on cue, and this is how I'm gonna do it. We're going to enter a trigger into the room. Okay, so the dog's in the calm state of mind. Now I'm going to bring something that I think is gonna trigger the dog at a small level into the room, right? For example, if this dog is a dog who's anxious and is primarily anxious around other dogs and it's, it's prey drive, I might bring in a squeaky toy. Or if it's a dog who, who want, is, is anxious because he always wants to do stuff, but he's happy, I might bring in a ball or something, something to, t to get him going. If it's a nervous dog um, and I'm anxious because I'm afraid of the world, I might just bring in like a small dog or something, you know, depending on the case or something to get the dog to start to trigger into this bad space. Cause there's only two spaces, man. They're either in the bad space or in the good space, okay? <laughs> in their heads. And we know when dogs flip to this other space, right? So when they start to leave, you watch them, they're at zero, they're in the calm state of mind. This thing enters, let's go with the middle of the road guy. Let's go with the guy that everybody knows. The anxious guy who's anxious because he wants to do everything. Like I wanna get up, I wanna go play, I wanna do all this. So we use that guy for this example. But just know rehab's rehab, so we're rehabbing this guy's mind too. He's calm, I bring in a ball, and all of a sudden he's aroused. Like he might go zero to, to 60 because the association's there, right? Ball means high adrenaline and lots of fun. You know, dogs tend to react, they tend to trigger into these states of mind that they're, associated, they're associating the item with an event. And so, now I see the dog go boom, I'm in the state of mind, I'll put the, dog, the ball behind my back, I'll disagree by saying no, incorrect, because I, I correct and then direct, right? And then I'll say shh, which is the direction, or whatever word or sound you want to mean calm. And then I'll calm the dog down, teaching him, hey, no, go back to that calm state. I bring the dog back to the calm space. I wait a second, I wait a little bit, I like reset the scene, and I bring the ball back out. And you watch the dog not climb to zero to 60, but react to it, but slighter, but slighter. Because I understand that this is an energy thing and this is reactivity thing we're talking about, and this is your mind we're talking about, you're starting to get this across. The dog does react usually, but not as intense, now I, I, you know, I might keep the ball out this time or whatever and just shush the dog and give it low level taps on the e-collar to suggest you're not doing exactly what I want you to do. You're close, but you're not quite there and you'll see the dog start to relax. And if I have to go over there and like, you know, handle them at all, like massage them or whatever I will, but usually, especially a dog who has the anxiety because it wants to do something rather than afraid, which could take longer, uh, this dog's gonna start to relax. And as it starts to relax, I'm letting it know, good. And then I'll have that dog relax with that ball. That's the first, the ball was the first conversation I chose, or I, let me say, the first item I chose, but it's the same conversation. So whatever I bring into the room in the future, he's going to learn that this is just a, a skill that you need to learn when we're out in the environment, because I'm gonna tell you no to all this stuff and ask you to go into the calm state of mind eventually. But I'm gonna start by teaching you how to have the conversation of you leave the calm state of mind, I disagree, you go back. You need to know that skill and you need to know it on cue and you need to know that the e-call is related to correcting your, your mind error, not just your body, not just what you're doing with your body, but what you're doing with your mind, okay? So this was the process, he's in an empty room, okay? There's no other triggers. So I take that ball away and the dog's in the calm state of mind, we're good. Now I can bring something else into the room. This is the same session, generally. 
the dog starts to trigger, right? Okay? And you see them elevate and react. And however they react in different, in different ways, but they react. And sometimes it's just as simple as the dog's got, you know, is relaxed and then it's very attentive. And it goes to just that light, slight reaction. They're not getting up anymore and they're not going across the room. They're just kind of like lifting ears up and looking attentively. And I can even start to disagree with that. I'll get to the point where I'll say, shh. And they'll relax from that. And, and to just learn this conversation of when I enter, when something enters the room and the handler or the owner says, uh, disagrees with you, then you let it go. You don't think about it anymore. And you learn the skill of just letting it go completely. So you can see how we're doing this. So maybe I'll enter in um, another, a couple more toys or something and get the dog through that. And then after that, I might enter in a dog, right? And get the dog through that. You know, and say, even when a dog comes in the room, you have to relax. And, and, you know, this can be a hurdle for some dogs. This can be a hurdle because they want to so badly go over to that dog. Um, get the dog through that. Same process. It's the same process, right? Um, once the dog calms down, clear the set. I mean, empty the room. Bring something else in. Maybe I'll bring a person in. The dog's just learning these skills. How to, when I start to get... Um, interactive with the environment or reactive, if the handler says no or shh, that means disengage completely and calm down and I can hold you accountable on the e-collar. So they know that we're talking about their mind now and they know we're talking about whether or not they can have something or if we want them to even worry about it or if we want them involved in this activity. And this is why anxiety goes away. What we're not doing is just putting the dog on place, not doing any of the state of mind training entering things and the only reason the dog can't go get them is because they can't step off the bed. The dog will always be anxious. The dog, because I want to get off the bed, I want to get off the bed, you know what I mean? This is rehab work, so we're changing, we're gonna be changing the way the dog associates the world and these hot ticket items like leashes and people and dogs and this kind of stuff and cars uh, to the calm state of mind. And we're gonna let the dog know every step of the way, if you wanna to go to the next place, you gotta go into this calm state of mind. In fact, I'm gonna bring it a step further for you dogs. Here's my rule here. And, and I break this, this is for the heavy rehab dogs. Okay, this isn't for our, our, our easy average dogs. Your default state of mind, I'm gonna need it to be this calm state of mind. In fact, whenever I'm around you, this is what I need you to enter. Um, and that's what they associate me with. Now, if I offer you to go and have some fun and I say, break, go ahead, then you're allowed to then enter some different states of mind, but certain drives are off limits, you know, obviously, but they can play to a degree without getting super aroused. We cap that arousal. We don't let them get too aroused and there's a way to do that too. It's all part of the state of mind training. Um, but as soon as I give a command word or as soon as I say no, if, if you hear my voice in any way directed towards you, if that's not playful, back to that calm state of mind and back to paying attention. This is rule number one going on underneath the surface, below the commands, stuff that you're not gonna notice, right? When you see, that's why it's working though on the videos. That's why these aggressive dogs are, are willfully working with me, right? Um, because this is what I'm laying down first. This is dog whispering, but with an e-collar. This is a relatively new kind of craft, you know? And so, it works really well once you get good at it because you have all the dog whispering stuff, which is just amazing, except now your touch, your physical touch, if you train the dog right, if you teach them that's an extension of your hand and that's their association, it's you. That they, when they feel that stim, that's no different than them feeling your hand, correction, right? Um, and it's a very personal thing. So the stim that the dog's trained on here is a very unique thing. It's the way I teach the dog to feel about the stim, me personally. And every trainer is going to do it differently, okay? And, and so every dog, like if your dog's trained somewhere, you know, somewhere else, they're gonna have a different association to that stem, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Ours, if you notice, you'll notice we can click a dog in the e-collar and they calm down. You notice that? That's, that's because that's what we, we taught them to associate it with. That's what it means. That sensation means to calm down, and if you do, it goes away, okay? All right, so now we have a way to take our dog from this bad space to the good space, and this is what happens. Are you ready to see what happens? Okay, I'm gonna bring in something to this room. Uh, by the way, eventually the dog gets off property and uses these skills out in the real world and all that, and we heal the dog's view of the world and make it a proper belief, and we can actually get a dog to be 
uh, confident who came in shattered, right? Uh, so it's a long process, but I want to stick in this little box, this room, this empty room, okay? And I want to show you what it looks like when a dog is going through this process, okay? So the dog's in the room. I'm going to bring in something. It's, it knows how to do it now. I've taught it how to do it. This might be a few days later. The dog knows how to... Um, the, knows the process, okay? Now I wanna bring something in that you really struggle with, though. Whatever it may be for that dog, I have to do find that. You know, it might be a cat. That's a good one. Cats usually do it, you know? Um, you know, small dogs. Small dogs tend to do it for all these dogs. Uh, but something to get them really wanting to go uh, over there and getting anxious. So with something they're really gonna struggle with, this is what you're gonna see. Even in the beginning processes where you, where you bring something out that they mildly struggle with, this is what you're gonna see and, and, and why. Okay, so the dog is calm, completely relaxed. I bring in a cat, let's say, and then boom, you see the eyes widen, you see the ears go up. I mean, the dog gets tense. It might not be going after the cat because at this point it knows with me, we have them in a down usually, but they, they're not gonna break the, the, the big rules, but you can see, you can see it. You, know, you can see the loading process. And then they're lost in their head right now. Then I'm not even there for a second, you know? And then I say, uh, and then I'll tap them on the stem and they'll come back to reality. I just watch them come back to reality being like, oh yeah. And I said, no, shh. And I start encouraging them to relax and you'll see them start to lay down, but then have trouble. And this is what happens. The dog ends up laying there, self-regulating, calming itself down, but shaking and it's shaking. And if, and if somebody came in and looked and they looked, they say, what the hell's wrong with that dog? And they have sometimes in public when we're doing, doing this out on the streets. Uh, and this is what's happening. The dog's old association, which is go kill that thing, right? The dog's old association is fighting with the new expectation, my expectation. So old association is fighting the new expectation, which is equaling a vibration. Now what will happen is eventually that'll slow down and the dog's, my new expectation is going to outweigh and we're gonna have the calm state of mind. And that's what's, and then if I do this enough times, I can bring that cat in. This is just science, baby. I can bring that cat in and that dog will enter that calm state of mind uh, without me saying anything because that's the new association because dogs work off associations if you haven't learned that by now on this channel. <laughs> so that's all I, it's the big thing. If you learn how that works, everything's easier. So yes, we got a shaken dog, a vibrating dog. Their old association is fighting the new expectation, okay? And then slowly, this is the unhealthy state of mind. This is the, the healthy state of mind, you see? But if I can keep correcting and encouraging while she's triggering, boom, we'll finally get there and we'll see the sigh of release. We'll see the, uh, the, uh, the release sigh, the, the deep breath, and we see the dog healing. And now that cat's in that room, but that dog's not vibrating. And that dog's just breathing normal and getting through and learning the coping skills to get through these overwhelming moments that that has never been taught before. And not only is it a coping skill, it's one that I can reinforce with the with the e collar. So I can say, I need you to start taking deep breaths right now. Essentially, I need you to start calming down right now. Okay, do your part. So I can hold them accountable to do it. I can hold them accountable to be self regulating. So that therefore I'm not I'm not micromanaging this dog. And when this dog's done. The, job, the dog's job is to self-regulate and my job is to make sure they're self-regulating. And, and then and what ends up happening is the dog knows how to use the skill now. And, and we see dogs then, after this, they get training on, on the side of this. High end e-collar training, these dogs need to be trained up very nice because they have issues with them. You know, their minds can trigger into some crazy places. And uh, we start to get them out in the world and go after the big triggers. And what you notice is the dog generalizes the process of getting past some, some new trigger. They generalize the process, they become better at it, it becomes quicker. It actually, things start to speed up very, very fast. And that's how you see dogs who are a mess uh, look so good in four weeks. And that's not a lot of time in four weeks, but um, they just learn how to get through it. And they also learn that you can hold them accountable to tell them to get through it because it's not a choice. You need to not, you need to stay in that calm state of mind, okay, to do what it takes. And the dogs feel better because this is what happens. A lot of dogs, fearful dogs, fearful dogs this works with amazingly because they do not know the world. They have superstitions that are not accurate and it keeps them cuckoo. So like let's say a dog who's afraid of the whole everything, 
They're afraid of any moving thing. Like literally when you get a dog in like this and you put them in that room, if you roll a ball by them, any animal who has any experience in the world that's not crazy is going to know that ball is not going to touch that, that dog because the way I'm rolling it, the dog should know, obviously, it's not going to hit you. It's way over here, but the dog starts to panic. And you start to notice the dog doesn't know if it's going to hit him or not. They don't even understand trajectory because you want to know why? Because they've never been, they never held still. And they never just looked at the world. They bark at the world. They run from the world. They do all this. They never stop and see what's happening. So they understand absolutely nothing. And this is why these dogs are so messed up. So we have to start with teaching them. When you start to enter that frantic state of mind, go to the calm state of mind. And what happens with these dogs is they watch for the very first time, they watch a car go by and they realize a hundred cars just went by and I didn't have to run to get away from them. They actually don't ever do anything to me or people or dogs or bikes or trucks or whatever. They finally, we go and do it all. We just have the dog watch and the dog starts to feel comfortable. Go figure. They start to realize they, they change their beliefs. They're like, okay, so these don't equal death. And it's safe to just hold still. And I'm telling you, it is, it is that simple, but it's not an easy process. You know, you have to, it takes a lot of experience and skill and knowledge to get a dog through rehab. You can't just, not any old person can rehab a dog, unfortunately. So, um, but this is real. And the dog actually can think, it feels differently because it, it believes differently. It doesn't see, it doesn't see this as, it doesn't see cars as a threat anymore. Or, you know, we got something here. That was so maple. <laughs> Makes so much sense now. Yeah, ma that was maple. <laughs> and, and you know, every dog struggles with this to a degree. When they come in, they, they got a, a wonky kind of view of the world, usually. But with the severe rehab cases, that's what we're talking about today. Rehabbing the mind, using state of mind training. It works. And it, it's worked on every case I've ever done. Any type of dog, whether it's fear or if it's dominant. Oh, I'm sorry. Fear, anxiety, or if it's just the the anticipatory anxiety of uh, of wanting something really bad, you know, it works. So that's the process, and what ends up happening is now they go home and they have you know they have a new view on the world, so they're not so messed up. But they also anytime they get into this, they're stuck in this anxiety cycle which we're going to talk a little bit more about, you have a way of snapping them out and, and having them calm down, you know? They're not just stuck there because the dogs will get stuck there like 24-7. The only time they're not there is if they're uh, sleeping, right? Dog, every, I know dogs that everything in their life they associate with anxiety, so they're just always in it. I, I know these dogs personally. <laughs> I've seen it created, you know? Um, oh, I'm glad that you're taking it up, Canine Hop. Hope, um, and sorry if I mispronounce things. You guys know I uh, I do not read well or write well, <laughs> but luckily that's not needed too much to train the dogs. So, okay, this is some pretty deep stuff, but it's great because it works. It, it works on a dog's mind, and you can really teach them to calm down. This is how we deal with dog aggression too. Uh, yeah, there's anxiety and dog aggression too because the dog either is, is doing it out of fear so it's nervous of the other dog and it wants to keep the dogs away or it's doing it because it likes to be dominant and it feels good and they get jacked up on adrenaline. But either way, if you start to say, don't do those things in front of dogs, then you see anxiety. So you have to know, so this skill is gonna be learning how to, how to calm a dog's anxiety down to the point where they have a healthy state of mind and the anxiety's gone is if you have that skill as a dog trainer, um, you will stay busy too busy, <laughs> too busy. So that was it for today as far as the topic, but I do want to, um, I do want to spend a minute talking about these triggers, guys, because people are creating, when I say trigger, I'm gonna explain what I mean because it's being created at a young age, these, these unhealthy associations, and they are pay, they're wreaking havoc on dogs' lives. And I don't think people understand how they're, they're creating such messed up dogs. Okay, but let me give you an example, all right? Uh, I get a dog who's like a year, all right? So it already has some associations. It's not that difficult to change the associations because they're relatively new. You know, six months, easy peasy. Those are very new associations. I could change those in a day, you know? It's not, you know, it's not a time thing, but you know, it's much easier. If the dog's five and up, it's much more difficult because that those it's just patterned. Those that that reaction is patterned, so the dog can literally trigger without even thinking, which is what ends up happening over over 
you know, dogs are reactive creatures. They don't have time to think in nature. They make associations and then when they see something, they react. That's why a dog goes from zero to 60. They just go into these different spaces, um, which we call states of mind or drives, right? And so the dog going through the whole day doing that. They're not thinking. They're just, they see this. They see the person at the door. I associated that from many years ago that I bark, so now I just bark. I see the leash. I associate that with high energy, possibly stress, uh, possibly just a really good time. So now I get really elevated at the sight of the leash because that reminds me of the walk, right? I see the truck. This means uh, everything. Everything the dog can't get through its day without triggering into an unhealthy state of mind that the owner cannot get them out of. They cannot get them out of. They can't. They can not. They just look at it and they're like, I can't. And so it's the dog's stuck. And you know it's not fun for the dog. Even though the dog wants to go have fun. I can't wait to get in the truck. And then I'm in the truck and I can't wait to get out of the truck. And you know, it's like, it's just, it's not fun for anybody. That's why, that's why trainers are always trying to encourage, can you get calmness on command? Can you say, hey, knock it off, calm down completely. And then we go out the door. That's that tough love stuff we talk about because now your association is gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna have some fun, but I need to be calm until we get to the amusement park. Like my dad's not gonna let me get in the car and throw a party on our way to the amusement park. He's gonna say, sit down and shut up, Josh, uh, because, or else we're turning around and going home. So you learn manners and patience and coping skills. These dogs aren't learning that. They're just allowed to stay in this space. And I know some kids are allowed to stay in that space too, but I wasn't allowed to. And, and you teach the dog to be polite and calm until we get there. And when we get there and I finally say the word break, then go, do, go have at it, man, be a dog, have fun. All right, and, and I'll have fun with you and we'll get all your energy out and you'll be a pile of mush and then we'll go home and everyone will be happy. But don't start at the sight of me putting on my jacket. If the dog starts when they see that as the start of the pattern of going out, no. Because you, you broke rule number one, your state of mind, went into a reactive, excited space without permission. That's rule number one, you're supposed to stay calm. So they get corrected for that and then directed for that. And that's how we keep a dog from doing that. So their association with the jacket will be like calm after a while and all this is calm, even though it does, it might possibly mean we're going for a walk. And so it, it keeps the dog from going crazy. Let's read what we got here. Mylan says, tremendously useful overview. Thank you, Mylan. Mylan owns Alistair. Uh, Though better, we are still working on Alistair's anticipatory anxiety in some instances. So this is very timely and helpful. Yes, and you probably will. Uh, he's a shepherd. And what I find with shepherds is they're more reactive because that's the way they're, they're wired. They're wired to uh, not think. They need to be fast. You know, They're wired to be taught a, a reaction to a particular uh, scenario and just react. And so if you mess that up, and, and you know I'm not picking on you anymore, Mylon. I've picked on you. I've, I've joked with, with you in the past and stuff, and you know, you've done a fantastic job getting this dog where he is. He's not an easy dog, but this is what they do. And if, and if you get the associations like to the house that he lives in and stuff, young, if it gets messed up or a certain, goes a certain way, then it's, it can be extremely hard to get that dog off from that because that's what, especially a shepherd, because that's what they do. They learn how to react and then they just react and that's what makes them wonderful working dogs, right? Because they're just going to be taught what to do and they're just gonna do what they're taught to do. Um, and if they're not taught what to do, they're just gonna do what they, they figure out on their own and, and it's gonna be very hard to then change that. Not very hard, you know, you can do it. You did a great job, but yes, there's so many things to go through and then you got new things to go through. Now we got new things to introduce you to and, and so it's, it's, gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be a process, but you are a good fit for that dog and he's in good hands and I love that dog. You guys, knows, you guys know Alistair, big old German Shepherd. He's got one white whisker. <laughs> okay, let's see here if we get anything else. Okay, how do I tell my husband to not get in between when I'm giving command when he gets home from work? My bully gets super hyper. Uh, when I'm home, he doesn't give me that. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, let me tell you what would work. And then I'll tell you, and I can't tell you exactly how to tell your husband. I could, if you want me to. Um, but, you know, so here's the thing. The dog's calm with you. And then an event happens where the home, the, somebody comes home. This is where dogs always get excited. Riggins still gets excited. You know, I just got him to the point where he knows, he knows what, if I say go, then don't come up on me. 
right? And so this is what this is the problem. Um, if your husband is in the room and your husband doesn't back you up, the dog's gonna play you. The dog's gonna play you, right? So he's gonna say, he's gonna listen to you and then he's gonna say, yeah, but dad's home. And that is uh, disrespectful towards you by the dog and the husband, all right? Because parents need to, you know, you're a parent of this dog too. You need to stick together and if mom says no, then even if the, the husband doesn't know why you're saying no, I'm just no too. Because mom said, because mom comes before the dog, right? And, and, and even in like, in some cases, like mom and dad, we, we're a team. This is how we get through raising our kids. We can't have our kids play us and we can't have our dogs play us. So I would definitely talk with him. And I think the reason why it's probably irritating you enough to put it on here is possibly because that's, the, you know, yes, it's just the dog, but it's also like, yeah, but I said no to the dog. And it's like saying no to the kid. If I said no to the kid and then you give in, that makes me look weak. And it's making that does it that is what that happens. That's, that's what happened to you, unfortunately, in that moment is, you know, it's reinforcing the fact that you're not going to be backed up. So I would talk to your husband and say, this means a lot to me. And I'm sure he'll be all right with helping it out. And that, you know, you want it to go differently. It's not saying you can't say hi. You just want boundaries. You explain to him what you want it to look like. And when he comes home for the next week, you hopefully he'll be willing to work on it with you. And this is how you do it. When that dog comes up to him, he's going to say no. And if that dog doesn't listen, he's gonna get corrected by your husband, not by you. And then your husband's gonna tell him to go lay down. That will get that to go away extremely fast. Now when your dog is calm and laid down, your husband took his natural time taking off his clothes or whatever he does, his jacket or whatever, then he can go over and pet the dog. But the dog has to stay calm. And then if you, and then if you wanna release him from there, good, you got through the event. But that's the easiest way for that to go away is if the husband comes in and corrects the dog for coming up on his personal space. Also, have the conversation of if you're saying no to the dog in the future, or he is, you guys got to back each other up. The dog will take advantage, uh, especially a bully. <laughs> I mean, they're going to do that. So, um, yep, I get that. I understand that. We see that a lot. All right. Look, we did a good job. All right. Now, check this out. You can start with the, the items in your house, right? So, like, go get the leash. You'll see, Okay. Click, 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 the dog starts getting elevated. Now, if your dog has an appropriate reaction, then don't do, there's no need to do what I, what I do, right? So if your dog is just like mildly excited, but not really going into a very unhealthy place, you can, you're fine. You don't need to work on this stuff, you know? <laughs> it's the, you guys know who I'm talking about. The dogs just fucking lose it. They lose it. <laughs> It's like, no, 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 right? If you got one of those dogs, you need to do this stuff. It gets rid of it, okay? <laughs> so good morning, guys. Tuesday, we did it. We had a good one. I got it off my chest, and I just love that you guys were patient and stuck around. You guys really stayed the whole time. Um, if there's any questions, obviously leave them in the comments, and I try to get to them all. If there's any suggestions for a future topic or, um, or question, that you think needs to be a video. Uh, I will try to get to it in a future live. Now remember, this is rehab in the mind. This is also teach. This is also just really it's changing the way your dog uh, feels about something. It's given you the the ability that when you go out in in the world and your dog starts to get hyper focused on something, you can snap them out of it easily and keep them out of it. So they're not. You don't have one of these dogs that just won't let it go. I just seen a squirrel ten minutes ago and I'm still going. And let me get on something else here before. The whole dogs live in the moment thing, I got a question to leave you guys on because it's blowing my mind. I just, I'm still watching dogs and trying to figure them out. But dogs live in the moment. We all know this, we've heard this. Dogs don't have the capacity to, to, to plot things for the future or to really think too far in the, in the past or maybe even in the past at all. They can't think in the past at all. So that leaves them in the moment. But let me ask you this. Let's bring our dog back to that room where there's nothing in it. It's just a blank room and they're in the middle and it's just you and the dog, right? The dog's in the calm state of mind. You bring that leash in. I'm using the leash because it's an easy, it's an easy trigger that everybody has where you can see your dog get excited. So that just means that it leaves the calm state of mind. It doesn't have to be excitement. It can end up being at other states of mind, but they leave the calm state of mind. I'm gonna bring in a leash. The dog's in the calm state of mind, his head's down. I go click, the dog's walk. <laughs> click, click, click. And I'm like, oh, I got some fire here, right? He's, he's starting to 
I said, you want to go for a walk? <laughs> okay, now I got him there. Now I'm going to take the leash and leave it on. The, I'm going to leave the room. All right, and I'm going to come back in. The dogs. <laughs> Now he's in this blank room right now. There is no leash in the room. I put it away and I come back in. He's still thinking about, he's still thinking about it. Now what's going on there? Is he thinking about when it was there? Is he thinking in the past? Is he like, I remember when this leash was here or is he thinking, is the leash gonna come back? I hope the leash comes back. Or is he simply just associating that leash with the, the physiology and association that he has with the activity it's tied to, which is the walk, right? That means walk. That's what happens. And then you leave your dog stuck. That's what's happening. And so now he's just in, half in this kind of space that he would, that he would be operating while he's on the walk. He's just triggering into it. <laughs> still going. I could probably sit there 10 minutes and he'd still be going. There's no leash and sign. I mean, I could leave the room and he's just, he's stuck. Now, how do you get, you need to know how to stop that. If you can stop that, you can stop it all throughout the day, day and your dog becomes a healthy dog. If you don't, your dog gets stuck there forever, right? That's, that's what he'll be and it won't be fun. How do you stop that? Easy. No. Correct. It works. Why? Why does it work? You're correcting the dogs for whining. That's not right, is it? He's crying. No, no. The way I see it, this is how the dogs see it. And this is why it works, baby. Whatever a dog is thinking about. So now he's thinking about the walk. This is where it works. He's thinking about, he's going, walk, walk, walk. <laughs> I want to go for a walk. All he sees is me saying, no. And then correcting him. And the way it lands in his head is, no, you're not going for a walk. Right? That option gets taken away. And now the dog settles down. And anytime the dog starts to think about the walk again, I said, no. Don't think about the walk unless I told you it's time to go for a walk. And that's essentially what you're doing. People don't correct whining. They associate it with crying. It's not, it's the other C word, it's complaining. It's not crying, right? The dog's saying, I wanna go for a walk. It's a kid in the candy store saying, I want a candy bar, I want a candy bar. Why can't I have a candy bar? Jimmy has a candy bar. Now what are you gonna do to that kid? There's a couple things you can do. There's three things you can do. You can let him keep doing that and drag him through the store and ignore it. Or, you can get him the candy bar, which will temporarily shut him up, which reinforce that bad behavior for the next time you're in the store. Or, that's right, you give a punishment, which is we're leaving the store. And I'm leaving everything here. I'm not even taking my stuff, kid. And we're going back to the car, and you're not getting anything either. And if you act like that in the store, you'll always leave the store. That's the punishment. Because the kid wants to be in the store. That's not the easy one, <laughs> but that's the one that will change it for the future. A couple of those and all of a sudden your dog, your, your kid's not being a brat in there, right? If you had failed to do that or you don't, you're too busy, you don't have the time, blah, 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 blah. I know, guys, right? I know. You reinforce it either way. You let it go naturally. It's not doing anything. He's going to do it again. If you reinforce it by buying him the candy bar, you're, you're a sucker. You're screwed. Your kids gotcha, gotcha, right? can't reward that kind of behavior. So same with the dog. So if the dog's sitting there complaining, I want to go for a walk. I want to go for a walk. You're going to give him the leash. You're going to put that leash on him and bring him for a walk. No, we don't go for a walk when you tell me like that. When you complain like that, that's, that, that equals no walk. That equals more time with you just laying there and being quiet. It actually equals me correcting you physically. Then when I want to bring you for a walk, I will bring the leash out. But if you get excited, I'm just going to correct you because that's not how I want you to behave while I'm putting the leash on. A, a couple of days down the road, what do you get? What do you get putting this work in? You walk into the room, you bring the leash out, the dog sees it, you see that he's happy, but he's calm. 
and you might get a little tail brush and you say, that's fucking awesome. And you put that on and you bring that dog for a walk and, they, and that will repattern the way the dog behaves around the leash. But now you got to do it for everything if you've already messed it up, right? I mean, if, it, if you've already, if you've got a dog for a couple of years and, and they're already doing this, you got to go to the truck and the door and then everything. If you start young, you teach the, just teach the stuff, the stuff to the dog young, you're able to, um, you're able to do the state of mind stuff young. Then you have a way of disagreeing with elevated states of energy. And that's all it's all about. It's just like, no, drop your energy, relax. Once you relax, we'll go kind of thing. All right. So, um, interesting stuff. It's what gets me through the day. I use this stuff. This is more, um, useful for me than actually even knowing how to train the commands. Uh, because this allows me to get a dog in a space where whatever I say to them, they actually pick it up. Oh my God. When they're in this space and you teach them, they, it's like you give them a rep and, they, and it's like you gave them 10 reps because they're actually giving you 100%. Um, so yeah. All right. We're going we're gonna to wrap it up. I got a new dog coming today. It's a beagle mix. She's five. Like I said, when they're older, you know, you're going to see some stuff. Um, we're definitely going to be doing state of mind training with this dog because we do it with every dog, but five years old, going to have to go through some old associations, I'm sure. Stay tuned to see all that stuff over on Facebook. And remember over on YouTube, we got the playlist where you can find all my talks. Julie's taking care of that. Appreciate each and every one of you. Please comment if you, if you got any questions. Let me know if this was helpful. Um, confusing. <laughs> I hope it wasn't. I told you it's difficult to talk. It's difficult to explain. Uh, but I hope it helps some. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow where we're going to talk about, you know what's funny? I don't even know yet. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.